Imagine you're a fisherman and you've hooked into a 15 foot Mako, the biggest you've ever caught. And when you finally land the fish, you see this. Nothing but a ravaged head on the end of your hook. This leaves us with a big question. What in the ocean could have been big enough to take a bite like this? In today's video, we'll investigate. In March of 2019, an Australian fisherman set out for an average day of fishing. But what he reeled in that day was anything but normal. Let's get right into it. Tell me about that fateful day where you pulled in what is arguably one of the largest Mako heads that I think anybody has ever seen. Yeah, we had something quite heavy on the line. It was fighting quite a lot and it went quite slack for a while. Pulled it up and there it was. It's definitely one of the biggest makers I've seen as the, as the head was really heavy. It took two of us. It was a big, big shark. Wow. How big did they estimate that Mako was? A thousand pounds. So thousand pounds and what that would be that would put it at 15 feet something like that yeah oh, yeah what yes. do you think actually happened who knows you don't hold any weight to the notion that it could have possibly been a megalodon or some other unknown giant species well it's the ocean mate you know it's a big place it's a deep mm -hmm. place it's a scary place and we you know very little we probably know more about the surface of the moon and the ocean so um you can't really credit anything out, you know? <laughs> What's crazy about this is that where Mako sharks like this live, they should be the alpha apex organism. There should be nothing in the ocean capable of biting this animal to shreds. But as you look closely here, you might say, oh, this is from some nip or some animals chewing on it. But that is a singular giant bite as though one animal bigger than this shark, which isn't known to exist, came in and in a single swipe bit off the rest of the body. So what could have caused all this damage? One of the theories behind the Mako attack is that it was orcas, the apex predator of the ocean, wolves of the sea. But when you look at the tooth structure of an orca, when you look at the jaw morphology and you consider the fact that these animals have the surgical expertise to perfectly remove a shark's liver, and you look at that big, jagged, bloody mess behind the Mako's head, you realize that while it may be a theory that the orca committed the murder, it's not, in fact, a possibility. Now, when we look at the great white shark tooth, which is basically a razor's edge, it's a very shredding tooth. But as you see when you look at bite marks within a surfer's board, there are clear punctuation marks. This is much more of a serration which leads you to think that it could be from something like another Mako. However, this is already a gigantic Mako shark, and the idea of small ripping shredding teeth doing that is correct, but the bites are too big. As you look where the certain pieces of chunked flesh are gone from, it's indicating that the teeth that punctured this flesh were absolutely enormous teeth, bigger than the largest known great white sharks. So, as preposterous as it may sound, the real question is, could it have been a megalodon? A giant prehistoric shark that came in and in one foul swoop, took a bite and the rest of the body off of this Mako shark. This right here is uh -huh. the jaw of a Mako shark that is pretty similar to the size of the one that was brought up by that fisherman. It's a pretty big head, very impressive size shark. So given it is that big of a shark, could any of these other species potentially have been the culprit to come in and eat that Mako? Potentially as a group. I see. So, you know, as you come over, you see the white shark jaws and I have to ask the obvious when I see this gargantuan megalodon jaws. Is it possible for a megalodon to do this? Been extinct for three and a half million years. So I know there's a lot of movies, there's a lot of rumors, it's kind of this Bigfoot-esque nature to the megalodon. Is there a giant shark out there that could prey on top of the food chain sharks like white sharks and makos? Well, you never know. There could be really anything out there, but my scientific heart has to lean towards no. Have you ever seen the satellite imagery of the 70 foot long shark that was captured on, on satellite images, like off the coast of Brazil. No, oh, I haven't seen that. It's 
pretty interesting because it's hard to envision that there are these giant extinct sharks roaming around, but you know, it's pretty fun to imagine and it really does lead the question, what else could it have been that killed this giant mako? Take a look at this new bit of information coming out in April. What's the new evidence now? A satellite photo near Sao Paulo. All right, this I wanna see. Let's take a look at that. Uh, it was taken by NASA. When they zoomed in, they got this. So there, that is clearly the outline of a shark. Now, you have no size for scale, but look at what they figure out for scale. That's a shark, and not just any shark. If you look at this other satellite photo I brought, it was taken at the same resolution of a school bus yard in nearby Sao Paulo. Now, those are 40-foot buses, and when you compare them next to the first photo, I'd say that's a 70-foot shark. Now, this is TikTok, it's the internet. We all know falsified information is rampant on the internet. But it is fun to dream, maybe the extinct megalodon could still be out there. And even though the bites resemble two very large bites taken, I think it's probably safe to assume that this shark was struggling on the line, it was fighting for its life, and a pack of other smaller sharks came in and coincidentally took those bites out of it, ripping it to shreds, even though it looks as though one big shark did all the damage. Regardless, science doesn't have an answer, we don't have an answer, and this is a mystery that remains unsolved.